Howdy! Daniel Kreisler is here and today we have homemade experiments, desk size DIY and other shenanigans. I hope you noticed the disclaimer before the video. This is very, very dangerous if you do it without proper experience and knowledge of high voltage stuff. I honestly hate it when people go like, hey, I was born too early to explore the space. I was born too late to explore the earth. Right now, most of the science is swarming and rummaging in this area. Quantum fucking physics. A very complicated thing. Today, we'll see how it all works and what can we get from all these quanta using just the usual mason jar. Mm. On the table, you can see various strange things. The only familiar one being the vacuum pump. It has has already starred in our videos. We'll use it to pump out the air out of the jar. We also have another jar and today we have many cool props. We'll go from bottom to the top and try to make a glass jar filled with, well, not neon, as it turned out it's pretty hard to get neon, but we'll make a lightning glass jar on our own and find out how does it all work, why is it shining and so on. So, the vacuum pump sucks the air out of the jar. As you can see, there is a special electrode installed. Fuck knows what it is made of, but it lets us light up the gas inside the jar. We'll be lighting up the gas inside with many various devices, with voltage from 2000 volts up to 20,000 volts. 20,000 volts! It's like 100 times more than your socket. Holy shit. First of all, I'd like to check our scheme with something precise. We have a special neon lamp, which is used for making neon signs. Here you can see two electrodes on the sides sealed in inside. Inside the lamp, the electrical discharge should appear, some glowing. I want to start with it and then we'll get to more interesting homemade stuff. Right, up. Nearly smashed it. I got this circuit board from an old TV, which is out of use right now. It was inside a big fat tube TV. There's an interlacer with 15,000 volts, and this thing gives out AC current. So it's going to be interesting to see what's gonna happen inside the tube. Uh, the tube itself is sealed, vacuumized, and filled with gas required for the glowing to appear. It's neon. Let's turn it on and see. Oh, you with all the experiments. Ah, uh, something... Uh, oh. Oh, good. Wow, well, what's going on? The gas is glowing, but the tube makes some bitchy, nat buzz. It works. Two electrodes, an electric arc between them lights up the gas. I don't really want to say that you can use stuff you got from old devices and that it's all safe. But the fact is that physics-wise, all that crap works all right. But the bus is disgusting. <laughs> some piles of wires, glass things, electrodes. Let's consider the circuit diagram. The diagram. So this is our tube which was glowing or should be glowing. It's in the shape of a jar. One, two, three liters. There is some gimmick to make it shine. As you can see, we use the tube itself and a power source. And two electrodes from the sides to create an arc inside. So to get the light into the jar to lock up and marinate our photons in there, we need to use a vacuum pump to pump out the air. But that's not all. After we pump out the air, our pump can deal with medium or even high vacuum. Then we turn on the pump. The air is sucked out of that wonderful jar. Then we turn on the power source. We'll see a small arc struggling through the rest of the molecules left, which won't let it become fluffy, big and shiny. When the rest of oxygen and other gases burn out, we turn on the pump again, add some more CO2 and control all that with a, well, not the manometer, uh, who wrote this? Vacuum gauge. It's from 0 to minus 100. And we fool around with that stuff, pump out the vacuum, suck out some more air with a pump, add some gas, and finally we'll get a big, proper, fluffy plasma biatch. It's a fourth state of matter. We know there is solid, liquid, gas, and here you go. Plasma. And fuck knows what to do with it. It's just almost clean energy. Let's check it out. All that theory without practice is full of shit and vice versa. Let's begin with that wonderful one liter jar. We'll connect it to the xenon ignition unit block, connected to the first and the second electrodes. Right now we'll start to pump the air out of the jar and see what happens. Turn on the pump. The vacuum goes into the jar, we leave the pump and I want to see what will happen. Let's have some voltage. Nothing special, let's add some CO2. Fuck, a bit too much. Okay, now we're going to catch an unstable arc. 
Just a bit. Let's add some more. Hmm? Lights up a bit? Well, that's something. We already can see photons. The Xenon ignition unit is not really suitable here, so we're going to replace it with another device, which is also pretty easy to get, but it has high voltage. Let's turn off the pump and get our microwave transformer. An extremely dangerous device. High amperage, high voltage. See for yourself. Many American school kids kick the bucket while trying to make Jacob's Ladder, so no shit, guys. It's really dangerous. High voltage barbecue, Jacob's Ladder, a Lichtenberg figure might all be like a toaster bath for you, so check yourself before you wreck yourself. First of all, I want to unplug it. As I can see, the vacuum is still in the jar. It's locked up. Great. Plug it in, turn on the pump suck out the rest of it and turn on our device. Ah, too early. Turn on the pump and watch our electrical discharge moving around in the rest of the air. Vacuum God shows minus 100. Awesome. Let's turn it on. We see one solid rad arc. That's actually what I was going for. What else can we do? <laughs> Shit, what the fuck, Morgan Freeman? I think the electrode is going to melt now. There's some smoke. Let's turn it on again. Yeah. Awesome, epoxy is boiling. It lets air in. Fuck, something is cracking. Shit, I, shit, I ruined everything. <laughs> To get into a matter itself, we need to look at another scheme, more exact physics-wise. What is actually going on? Quantum crapola. The gas inside, neon, helium, argon, or inert gas, it's electrons go around their orbits and it feels just fine. After we turn on high voltage, one, for example, one of the electrons get additional energy and, and flies out to another orbit. On this orbit, it feels pretty shitty to hang out. It's uncomfortable, like at a crackhead's crib, and wants to bail back to its introvert world. When it decides, like, oh, this party sucks, it radiates a piece of light, a photon, and this photon gets straight into our eye. That's why we can see it. That's how the gas starts to glow in a tube. Let's go fool around. <laughs> I want to start with a real neon light transformer, which is used to light up neon in the tubes like we checked out in the beginning. It's up to 8000 volts. It's a bit less than the stuff we're going to use later on. Turn on the pump, so it's minus 100. Close up the pump and turn on the transformer. What it's going to be? A small arc. Now the arc is quite thin and it finds its way among the uh, Brownian motion of unstable molecules and it hangs out there. Uh, that's why it's so thin. Now let's have some voodoo that'll doo-doo with our devices. Close up the pump, open the jar and add some gas up to minus 40. Some more CO2 and we have some hellish waves and the arc gets fluffy. So it has some space to make way. Big volume, good glowing, I like. And now I want to play around with that thing. Close it up, add some CO2. We have Half-Life, Mr. Freeman. Resonance cascade, my brother. Lower the pressure, the arc straightens. Nice. Okay, let's make a running arc. Feels like the head crabs are coming, like for real. Nah, it's gone. Have to add some more vacuum. So, by playing with the options of vacuum and the amount of gas, we can get various effects. Physics, motherfucker! Okay, it's awesome, but let's up the fun level. 3 liter jar, more voltage, more power, and a new transformer. A new, big, powerful transformer. A new jar. Connect all that crap, and it's actually all the same. Pump it out, add gas, fire it up. A big arc. Sexy. Let's add some more gas. I want the whole jar to light up. I wonder if we can do it. What else can we change? We can change the transformer, gas, and add some metal fumes inside. How do you like them apples, eh? Anyway, by changing the amount of CO2 inside, we can get various effects. some strange kind of cosmic waves. 
microwave transformer. 2000 volts. 2 kilovolts, that is. But it has huge current. Don't fuck with it if you don't have a complete idea. It's extremely deadly. You'll be dead as a doornail in a second. Turn it on. Something is cracking. It gives me piss bumps. I'll be turning it off from time to time so we won't blow up because the electrodes are getting hot as hell. We changed the transformer, we replaced CO2 with argon. Let's play around with it because the jar is already smoking. Vacuum, let's go, turn it on. Goddamn plasma in the can. Now the argon seem to be burning. We are on the edge. Something went wrong. The transformer is too powerful. We'll use it all at the end to blow up the jar with it. Well, we need some trashy shit, right? Let's use the previous transformer and go on. Here we can observe different colors of the gas, various effects near the lid. And it looks just awesome. But that's not enough. Now we'll use a mercury thermometer because it's a pretty cheap and safe way to get quicksilver. As soon as mercury is inside the jar, the metal starts to vaporize and the mercury electrodes itself get down to work. And if we use the mercury electrodes, we get a completely different wavelength of the energy discharge. So the glowing spectrum becomes ultraviolet and that is dangerous and insane, but we still will do it. We wanted to refill the jar, but understood that it's impossible to stop staring at it. Check it out. I've never seen anything like that before. So many effects, so many manifestations. Okay, enough of glancing at various interesting physical phenomena. I want to get ultraviolet. As I've said, to reach ultraviolet wavelength, we need to put some vaporizing metal into the jar. And this time it's mercury. Modus operandi is the same, uh, but at the end we have to get ultraviolet light. I don't really want to stand next to it and I'll even cover the cameraman with some plywood. Okay, we're now going to inhale some fumes, don't we? Nice, I want to live forever. Fire in a hole. True that, ultraviolet. Eat some air gun. Hey, you crazy arc, cut the crap. And now we'll wait to see what happens. What arc will get this and that. It's get whiter, yellow, and now you can see there's no plates because I have no fucking idea why. <laughs> Come around sometime if you need some photons in the jar to take home. It's all rad and awesome, but I want to try the microwave transformer. It's the most powerful. We might blow up the jar right now. So the final cord, microwave transformer, let's turn it on and I'd better run to the hills. Turn it on, let's rock. Fuck, fuck it, I quit. Okay, great success. Everything is blown to shit. So to sum up, the cover melted down. The electrode got sucked in. That's some amusing crap and... Now we'll have to clean up for a fucking week. If you dig that shit fooling around science, sciencey trash, subscribe to our channel then don't forget to click like for all that crap. Daniel Kraster was here, see you later, bye bye. Here it fucking is. Here it is. Shit, I don't remember the word. Why the fuck am I doing this? Shit, I'm not kidding about the camera, man. You'll get your mug on fire. Yeah, quick silver fumes. What can I do? I signed up for this shit myself.